Okay, welcome. <clears throat> Okay, welcome to this little video that's going to show you how to make a graph in Excel. I'm using version 216, or published in the year 216. Okay, what I've done here is to list my subject numbers. I personally like to list things in this format because it makes it easy to process them. Um, you can certainly list things in different ways. I'm actually going to have the a separate column for the first group I want to look at and I've sampled smokers here, and I'm going to have a second column for the non-smokers, okay? So I'm comparing these two groups, and I want to find, I'm looking at the cardiac angles for each of these. I've got some notes here, because I always like to take notes on little things that make a difference. Um, but here we go, I'm going to start by finding averages for these columns. So first I'm just gonna label this, so I don't lose track of what's going on. Can't emphasize that enough. Whenever you label anything, be it a notebook or a sheet like this, uh, always keep in mind that you may not get back to this for several weeks. So you always want to write your titles and, and little notes on here as if you're writing it to somebody else, right? Because in a few weeks, you are going to be somebody else when your brain is in a totally different place. All right, let's go ahead and find the average of each of these. Now, you've probably done this before, but I'm going to run you through it again. Um, you can go up to menus up here, which will tell you how to do this, like formulae, okay? You can just type equal sign. Equal sign in Excel automatically tells the program that you're dealing with calculations and not with labels, right? So over here, when I wrote average, it just is a word. Over here, when I say equals, now it suddenly is going to expect some kind of formula. So I can begin by taking a guess. I could say A, V. And it already tells me, look, here are the different types of things we can give you. We could do an average. Um, if you're not that familiar with it, you can also go up to formulae, or formulas, as they write it. And there are various, you know, sort of recently used and more functions, math and trig, etc. This one's easy enough, though. We're just going to go for average. Okay, I'm going to go down here. I could literally type out the rest of that word, and it would give me that. Um, I can always, if I know what I want, just click on it, right? And it's going to give me the average. Now it tells me what I need. I need to fill in the number, the, the group of numbers that it wants to put together. So number one, number two, number three. I could literally type these in one at a time. I'm looking at the column here. I could type 49 and then comma, followed by 41, etc. But I'm going to do the easier way. Part of this video is showing you how to take shortcuts in Excel if you're not familiar with it yet. So I'm going to click and drag on here, all the way down, and then I'm going to finish it off with parentheses here. So shift, okay, that looks good. And it calculates the average for me. Um, now that's a live field, meaning if I change one of these, instead of 40, if I type 400, it's going to automatically change it, right? Let's change that back. Oh, you know how I'm gonna change it back? If you don't know what Control Z is by now, that would change your life, man. Control Z is one of the greatest inventions since like plumbing, okay. Um, so that undoes whatever you just did last in, in just about any, any uh, program. Okay, so there's my average. I'm going to go down and look at the standard deviation. So we're going to be finding standard deviations of our averages in this video. Again, I'm going to type equals, and I'm going to start by taking a guess. Hey, what if I go with ST? Yes, there's standard deviations of the population. There's standard deviations of samples. You can just go up straight up standard div. I'm going to use that because uh, if you've got an older version of Excel, it's going to want that. And that's going to give you a fine, fine uh, number for what we got. All right. I'm going to pull down there and try it again. All right. Now notice something. Is it calculating these blanks as zeros? That's always something worth asking yourself. You want to make sure that it's not, okay, unless you mean that to be a zero, and in this case, I don't. Um, one quick and dirty check is just to say, look, if these were zeros, you would expect a really low number, right? If this average is somewhere around 40, you can just see that by looking at it, certainly having zeros in there would, would cut it in half, right? You'd have sort of the average between zero and 40, 20. And you know that it's not. It, it's up around 41, so that looks pretty good. So I think we're fine. Here's your standard div. And again, thinking back to last year, um, the standard deviation is, the, is a measure of variation around that mean. It's a matter of how precise your measurements are. These are all fairly close 
to 41. So our standard deviation is quite small, it's under five. I'm gonna do the same thing for this column over here. And you know, again, a lot of this is just teaching you shortcuts. I'm simply gonna drag this and I'm going to edit it by doing control C. You can go up here and do, you know, your edit, where's your edit menu for control? Or copy, I'm sorry, not, cop not control, copy. I could copy it, um, I can just hit control C and that will copy it for me. I can also just drag this over How's that for fancy? And what it's done in that case, or uh, if I just hit Control-C, anyway, anyway, in which I've copied it, is it's now, if we look up here into this window here, what's going on, it's taken the average, or the formula here, the average of B5 to B14, and it's automatically transcribed it over by one column. It's smart enough to do that. It's done the same thing down here. It's always worth checking make sure that that knows what it's doing. Standard deviation, C5 to C14. Okay, so we're looking good. Now, I wanna graph these. I'm gonna make a simple bar graph. And Excel gets, gets really kind of tricky. You can really, I find it not to be terribly easy, quite frankly. Um, the easiest way to set this up in Excel is to not do it the way that I've got it here, the way, the way that I like to usually present my data. So I'm actually going to put a separate little thing over here. I'm going to say, let's make these the labels will be smokers, cardiac angle, or smayokers. Let's make it smokers and non-smokers. I'm putting the apostrophe after the S because it's a plural. All right. All right. So there's my people. And I'm just going to report the averages here. The standard well let's let's do this again because I suggest that averages let's just, let's just call it average and average leave. let's label it so when we come back to it we didn't know what we did we know what we did all right I'm going to take these and copy them over to here okay now notice I'm actually having to flip it this is going to become this right now these are columns these are going to become rows um, I could just copy these over um, well let's see if that works let's see if it copies the formula that no, doesn't know what it's doing okay I can there are fancy things you can do over here in the in the edit menu to copy formula or copy sort of terms all right uh, so what I'm going to do actually is just say equals I'm just gonna make it equal this cell so b16 that's going to keep it live what? Hey, stop. Give me an aggravation. All right, let's try it again. It's because I didn't do, I didn't do the cell. Uh, in other words, when you do a cell, you have to do parentheses around it when you're asking it to look at a cell, meaning, meaning that, that cell right there. Okay, so it's live. So again, if I change this to 400, we're going to see the changes happen here and here. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing down. Well, I'm going to do the same thing over here. Equals. So this one's going to be standard deviation B17. Parentheses, B17. So we're now on C16. And we're going to go to C17. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay, so now that I've got that sort of transcribed over to here. I've got it set up in a way that Excel can easily process that. Again, I'm just doing this to make the graphing of it a little easier for you. Now, let's insert a graph. Now, there are a few different ways to do this. Um, the most sensible way, it seems, is to go to Insert, and you're going to go over to the types of graphs. It could recommend one for you. Uh, I, I don't like having it recommend. I'm going to go to a 2D column. Don't do 3D unless you actually have three dimensions of things. If it's just one deep, that makes no sense. So 2D, I'm now, I can select data. Now this can all just kind of go wrong. It can be really difficult to do this properly. And once it goes wrong, it's hard to recover from. I'm gonna show you how to do this because many of you will start by inserting the chart. You actually have to grab the labels as one of the sets of data. Okay, so you can see you got your legend entries and you got your sets of data. So you could do it separately, 
The way that always works for me is to just do this. You see how I've grabbed both. Now when I hit OK, it has set this up properly for me. I check it, of course. It's got the smokers. It's got the non-smokers. This is about right, right? 41, that looks right. This looks great. We're good to go. OK. The other way that you can do this is to simply start by grabbing this. But it all comes down to grabbing the right two columns, including the labels, right? And this is why I've, I've set everything up again in a separate little summary uh, before bothering to start with this. Okay, now if you just insert the graph, it does the same thing. It just skips the step of asking you the next thing. Right? Okay, so there we go. Now, adding, I want you to put the standard deviation error bars on this graph. Now, this is where it gets really tricky. All right, we're going to select. You see, I've just clicked on these to select the, the data sets. Fine. What would be the most sensible thing? The most sensible thing was you would go over to add a chart element over here to the left. Oh, look, error bars. Hey, it's got it for us. We could add none. We could add a percentage. If we add a percentage, it makes sense, right? Look at those error bars, and you can see that each of them, it says 5%, is 5% of the value. Um, this one here is a little bit smaller than that one there. Great. Wow. Well, what we really want is standard deviation. Oh, how cool. Let's click that. And look what we get. I can't tell you how many lab reports I see where you get this kind of standard deviation listed. Now, a standard, devi <laughs> a standard deviation is a real thing. I don't understand how the people at Excel who are so smart, who have made so many great aspects to this program, can quite frankly just blow it so badly every single iteration of their program. This is worse than having no standard deviation option because a standard deviation is a real thing. And what they're telling you is that these are the standard deviations and it's a complete and utter lie. Look at these. They're both the same, first of all. We know our standard deviations are very different. Right? We can see those up here. And do they reflect reality at all? It's kind of suggesting that you know, you got plus and minus. If this were the average, that's a standard deviation of what, 10 or 12? It's got nothing to do with what's going on here. I don't know how it calculates it. I don't know why it calculates it. Not only are they the same, which they shouldn't be, they're list. They're, why is it averaged around 50? It makes utterly no sense. And if you report a standard, you're better off not reporting error bars than reporting the wrong error bars. Because reporting the wrong error bars is lying to the viewer, telling them these are your errors, and they're not. <sighs> Get me going. Okay, so what do you have to do? First, you have to, back here, error bars, go to more error bar options. Okay, there we go. Now, go over here. You could do plus or minus. You could do just the positive error bars, just the minus. Plus or minus makes sense. You can decide to cap them or not cap them. Okay, these are just style choices. I like the capped ones. It's not right or wrong. Now we're going to go down to, <laughs> apparently this doing a standard deviation, what they call a standard deviation of plus one. It's not. I don't know how they get it. Um, we're going to go to custom. Now, <laughs> it's even giving us suggesting values for us for the custom, which doesn't make any sense. We're going to go to specify the custom values. Okay, now we get somewhere. Now I have found in these fields over here, when you try to type stuff in, it can get really persnickety. It just jumps around. I don't know why. I find the easiest thing to do is simply ablate the field, start over, hit equals. Okay. And then I'm simply going to find the positive error bars. I've got the standard deviations. It knows the, the proper rows you want. I'm going to click here and drag down. Okay. And you can see what it comes up with. You can interpret all this. It's sheet one. It's, it's you know, got the dollar sign, meaning the, the column, and then the dollar sign, meaning the row. Um, you can go in and tweak this if it goes wrong, but I find it easier just to, to start over on it when it does go wrong, if it does. So I'm going to get rid of these and do equals, and I'm just going to do the negative error bars being the same, right? Because I'm looking for plus or minus. That assumes a normal distribution around the mean, with only an n of 5 in each of these cases, that's a bit of a cheat. You really can't assume that, but I would have to report it as such in my uh, figure legend, probably. Or in the method section, probably the figure legend. Okay, so now I'm going to hit OK. Now we've got something that's nice and pretty. Okay, 
Does it make sense? Let's always take that step to check. Okay, 4.7, we're right around 41 up there. That's shy of 50. Yeah, that sounds around right. You know, I could actually measure it and, and see, but we know that it's not, you know, completely kooky. Um, and this one here, 16. Yeah, that looks like around 16. So I can kind of trust it's probably pretty good. Could probably make it bigger if we really, really want to take a look at that and measure it using a ruler or something. Of course, you can then go in and change the tar tar title, you know, blah, 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 blah. You can do whatever you want. Um, figure legends you would add below. Probably I usually add them in a separate box that explains the figure and talks about any relevant points in it. Now, why do you want to add error bars to a figure like this? It gives the viewer some idea of the scatter in the data. If I didn't have error bars and I looked at these means, I would say, well, those are really look pretty different, right? But by seeing the scatter here, I can see the signal to noise ratio. In other words, this is a very noisy average. I know that the actual data points are located all over the place. Uh, plus and minus one standard deviation, if you have a standard bell curve, represents around two thirds. It's, it's uh, 60, 68%, I believe, um, of all the data. So it, it means there's even data outside of there. And often people use what I call the eyeball method, which is that if the error bars overlap with the means, like this error bar here you can see kind of falls right around or, or above, or even if the error bars themselves overlap, is another way to think about it, then you really got to kind of question whether this is a significant difference, statistically significant difference. In other words, whether these could have just been found by chance, and if you redid the experiment, you'd find that the means actually were not very different from each other. Okay, so that's how to properly make error bars. And of course, in the figure legend, I would say what my error bars were, right? I would say that these are standard deviations assuming a normal variance, um, or so I'm assuming, assuming a normal distribution, and I would say n of 5 in each case. Um, Often you'll see an asterisk on a graph. Uh, I find the best way to put these in is by hand on Excel, actually. So you just kind of add it somehow later. You do an insert box and, and put a little asterisk. So it's a little star. And that star, you would say in the figure legend, what it indicates, often it indicates um, statistical significance at a P equal to or less than 0.05 value. Okay. All right. So there it is. Um, you know how to do this. And in all of your reports moving forward in your life, you will never put kooky, crazy standard deviation error bars again. Excellent. Over and out.